Hey, NACA fan, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you once again for tuning in. Today's video is going to be about the NACA binder that I mentioned in my How to Get Through NACA um, Faster video, where I gave you guys kind of like three or four tips or tricks. Hopefully that video, video really helped you guys out. So today I'm going to show you guys exactly how to set up that binder that I mentioned. Um, thank you once again for everyone who's liked, comments, and subscribed to the channel thus far. I really appreciate it. Um, and I hope that these videos are helping make to make your NACA journey just a little bit easier. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to get into um, exactly um, what you need for um, to set up your own NACA binder and how you should set it up and what's included in each of your sections. Okay, so um, what you guys are going to need to do is to get you a three inch or larger three ring binder. Okay, um, I also added some paper clips to mine to separate my documents and then within the sections, separate them. And then also I got dividers um, and I labeled each of my sections. And you guys see how fat and full this binder is, right? Three inch. And you want to get one with the really good rings because you do not want your documents slipping and sliding, especially when you have that many. And this binder is really the goat because I held it down. I mean, it's look a little rough now, but I held it down through my NACA journey. Okay, so there's about like six or seven sections that you'll have, and I'm going to tell you exactly how to set those sections up and what will be in each section. So section one is I labeled it NACA documents. That's anything you get directly from NACA. So um, that's your qualification letter. Once you get qualified, that's all your action plans that you and your uh, mortgage counselor sign and date. Um that's your um, property specific letter. Anything you get from NACA, anything you get from hand, anything directly from NACA sent to you, I print out a copy because NACA just loses things and I put it into my binder and I made sure that I had a, a physical copy in case like the NACA system crashed or they had something to go horribly wrong. You just never know with NACA. So I kept all the copies of that in case one person tells you one thing, and somebody else tells you something else, you have a physical copy. Anything from NACA goes inside of that NACA document section. Directly after that, I had my income um, section. So I had a section labeled income. And inside of there is where I put my last two years of W-2 forms, as well as my last two years of tax returns. Have both of those inside that section, as well as my pay subs. Um, and anything to do with any type of money that you're getting in. So, like, I don't know how that looks for people who are self-employed, but anything related to your income you want to have in that section and you want to make sure that you keep a copy of that. So in case you're in an appointment and they say, oh, I don't have this. Oh, where's this at? Oh, where's that at? You get switched through counselors. You have physical copies because they are not going to go through and look through the file. So I kept electronic copies and I kept physical copies. The physical copies was for when I was in right in front of them. So they wouldn't have to print it out, come back, sit down, try to scan it, get a good scan. Just take my copy that I made sure was legible and scan it through. And that helped to simplify a lot of things. The next section I had was a section where I had anything related to rentals within the last two years. So that was um, all of my leases. That was canceled checks. That was um, bank statements where I circled um, exactly where I paid my rent for like the last, let's just say six months I did it for. Like any time where I paid rent, I um, circled it. All the contact information for everybody um, who I rented from within those last two years. All the information I had right there for when they had to fill out um, the verification of employment. Or when I had to fill out, like, um, because you have to fill out the top portion. So I had all that information already there. So I didn't have to go looking through documents. I, I didn't have to go looking through a bunch of things. I had all of the contact information for my rentals right there in the rental section. Then I had a section called statements. That was my bank statements. Um, and to back, support my rentals, sorry, to backtrack real quick. To support my rental statements, I had a year worth 
of rental statements um, printed out and I circled everywhere, um, everywhere, every time I paid my rent. And I, at the top, I annotated um, proof of rental payment on page two. Okay, I just wanted to make it as clear as possible. And that actually wound up helping me out when I just was able to point to it, show my mortgage counselor, and he was like, okay, good, you have that? All right, good. And he scanned a few things in and he was able to use it. And he just wanted to make sure that he could see it so that he could know how to note my file. Okay, so back to your statements. So you're going to have your bank statements. I think it's three months of bank statements. Um, you're going to have your retirement statements and your credit card statements. All the three months, right? Like the last three months to show um, exactly how your accounts have like grown, progressed, what, what resources, financial resources you have, um, and everything like that. So I put my statements there. Um, and I was able to like... It, Cause they lose those things. I was able to have a, when I'm sitting in front of them, I was able to have my copies so that all they had to do was just scan it in the scanner. And it was no fuss, no muss. Sometimes the copies aren't working. It's this, is that, it's knacker. Okay. So keep your own copies. Um, if you can definitely keep an electronic version as well, because when you're not sitting in front of them, you want to make sure that you're able to get them documentation as well. Then I had a section where, um, for my, LOEs, letters of explanation. I had to write several of those. And those came in handy when I switched counselors. Because yes, all my LOEs were already uploaded into the system. But NACA is not always organized. So you need to make sure that you have your documents. The second count the second um counselor wanted me to um edit some of my letters of explanation so it was better more understandable for him. Um, and the underwriters, so I had to edit some of those documents that I had already, those letters of explanation that I had, that I had already wrote several times for my previous counselor. And I told you guys, the first counselor was only um, mortgage counselor certified. And the second one, no, he wasn't certified, the first one. So he was just, he wasn't able to take me through the whole process. He wasn't loan officer certified. He was just a mortgage counselor. So in order for me to go to underwriting, I needed an official loan officer and that caused me to have to switch. And that's what I had to do. So that's the letters of explanation. I'm going to actually give you guys a video on letters of explanation and what those look like because those were a pain in my side <laughs> within my NACA journey. So I'll definitely give you guys an example of that in another video. Um, and then my next section was something called miscellaneous. Um, as you get closer to closing, they're going to, um, for you to have proof of like, proof of a bill that you paid on time. I'll like, so like, it has to be like a utility type of bill to them or utility or other bill. So I was able to use my GEICO insurance, but it could be like an internet bill. It could be a phone bill. Um, it could be a water bill, anything that you've had to pay, um, any bill that you paid 12 months consecutively on time. And they're going to print out from um, whatever that company is showing 12 months of on-time payments before they approve you. And then I also kept my student loan related documents there. Um, so in case they had any questions, because I thought that was going to be a real hiccup um, in my NACA journey, but it wound up not being as bad as I thought. Um and then I had stuff that was like home specific docs. So once I put an offer in on my home, any documents related to my specific home, I kept there because um, if I go to an appointment and um, I'm sitting down in front of somebody or I get an email and I'm sitting down in front of somebody and they're like, hey, wait, what? Like they had gotten my interest rate wrong. I was lucky enough to where I had a copy of the documentation what I submitted to NACA and I told them this is, I'm buying down my interest rate from this to this. And um, they had to like fix the documentation, but they had known that it was their fault and not my fault. Not to say that um, they were happy about that, but they made moves so that it didn't take, it wasn't long and drawn out. And I have my copies of documentation and I have my proof and I just sent that over to them. So that is exactly how is how your binary should be set up. So you have the NACA document section, you have your income um, document section, you have your rental document section, you have your statements, you have your letters of explanation, you have your miscellaneous, you have your home related documents. 
okay? I have those seven sections and I still keep this binder to this day um, just as a reference point in case I need anything in the future related to my home and my journey. It's all been documented here. And that way I'll be able to show you guys um, some of the documents that um, you'll need to be familiar with when going through NACA. And just give you guys a little bit more insight on what these documents look like, which will be in another video. I hope that this um, binder series, this binder video um, helped you guys. And I told you I got this idea of even setting up a binder from Gloria Douglas and her binder series. Um, she broke the series down into several steps and she organized um, the, the binder in her own way. This was my spin on um, the binder and it really helped me to go through the journey. She has several videos. Like I think it's like four or five binder series videos. So definitely um, head over to her page and check that out as well. Um, hopefully this video helped. And I want to thank you guys for once again for watching um, my YouTube channel. Um, you guys have become family. I want to see all you guys win and get into your homes. So I will have some more. Um, my next video may be about financing and budgeting because that was one key, key part of my NACA journey and me becoming NACA qualified as well as me being organized. And that's why the Binder series was the first one that I decided to do after the three tips and tricks. So next we will talk about the money the financing, the budgeting. Thank you guys.